أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله وشهد الله لا إله إلا الله وشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله من رب العالمين شكرًا for the ذكر the sister read from chapter fifteen verse forty four through ninety nine chapter fifteen verses forty four through ninety nine the surah of Hijr and there's many stories uh, in these verses. There's many reminders, many reflections in these verses. It's about 50 something ayahs, but it's really not that long, because the ayahs are not that long. But there's many things, many wisdoms, many knowledges in these stories. And one of the things that Allah Subhanahu wa said that the Quran is a dhikr, it is a reminder. And it went through about four stories, four different prophets, Abraham, Lot, Shu'aib, Thamud. It talked about the people of Hijr. It talked about the people of old. And Allah SWT always talks about the people of old to remind us. He said, and remember, and reflect, and remember when these things were happening. And he spoke a lot about Lot. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the things that was emphasized in the footnotes is that Allah's Rahmah before His retribution. His mercy before His wrath. When He came to the people of Lot, when He came to Ibrahim alayhi salam, it says that Malaika, the angel came to Ibrahim alayhi salam, before He gave him the glad tidings of the retribution or the punishment that was coming to the people of Lot, He first gave him the glad tidings of the son to come. Showing that His mercy comes before his wrath. And this is something that Allah SWT says through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that written on the throne of Allah SWT, he says, my mercy is over my wrath. My mercy is over my wrath. And then we learn from the other hadiths about Allah's Rahmah. We talked about this, that Allah SWT said that he created Rahmah and he divided it into a hundred parts. One part to human beings and then he left the other 99 for him. For surely his Rahmah is, is we can't even understand his Rahmah. Anta arhamu rahimi. He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. So one of the wisdoms or one of the things that was expressed in these stories is that Allah's Rahmah, it always precedes his uh, retribution. Even in the time of, we talk about Lot, because they talked a lot about Lot, that even though these people were burning, those who don't know about the story of Lot, this is the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were doing a thing that was never even heard of before in history. Period. Allah SWT said this is something that was never heard of. So these were the first people that did this. And it said that the men, they were yearning and burning in lust for men. They was doing this. They was hanging out on the highways and byways and hijacking people and molesting them and all kind of stuff. This is in the top seer. And also in the top scenes that Shaitan is the one who came up with this type of act. He was the one that initiated this. Shaitan. All filthy and illicit things. Shaitan is the one that initiated these things. Okay? So we talked about these people of Lot and how uh, they were engaged and involved. The whole city, okay, were involved in this type of fascia or munkar, this illicit acts of the men who were acting in faggotry and homosexuality and whatnot. Same thing we have going on today. America is meant to do what you like. Homosexuality, man, you better not put your hands on the faggot here in America, man, you will go to jail. They got more rights than heterosexuals. Now on TV, it's nothing about homosexuality on TV. Even on the, uh, what do they call that, soap operas. I was in the hospital the other day. They said, oh, did you see they was in the hospital laying on? I'm like, who was it? On a, on a soap opera now? They advocated on soap operas, man on man. One guy was in the hospital room, and he was on the bed, and the doctor got in the bed with him. This was on a soap opera. I said, are you serious? On a soap opera on TV. So these are some of the things that the lost people are reminds us because they said, they, there's a saying that said, history always repeats itself. Shaitan ain't doing nothing but what he used to do before. He's still advocating the same thing, still trying to get people to do the same things. He said, I will make them alter their creation. I will make them do this and this and that. 
But this story is, is quoted a lot in the Quran. And the thing is, Allah's Rahmah, even though these people were engaged in these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them respite. He gave them the Prophet Lot, or in Arabic, Lut. He gave them the Prophet Lut. We kept telling them, man, look, man, y'all ain't got to do this. Y'all can marry my daughters. We got women here that you can marry. You ain't got to do this. They said, nah, man, you know what we want. We want dad. Because it says that when the angels came, those who don't know the story, when the angels came, the angels were very handsome. They were very handsome. Right? Said that the people, were, when they went to Abraham, salam, when the angels was inside, it said that the people of the city were climbing on top of the house, trying to look through the windows and everything because these angels were so handsome and so beautiful that the people of the city was trying to molest them and break down the door and everything. Boom! Boom! They were trying to kick down the door and everything, and Abraham was trying to hold them against the door. It was like, make a door out to Allah, Ya Allah, you know, protect me, don't embarrass me. You know, these are my guests. You know, don't embarrass me. Give me the, the strength to uh, uh, hold off these, these, these wicked people. You know, this is what Abraham and Islam, come on, man, don't embarrass These are my guests. We got the women here. You know, follow the way that you're supposed to follow. So then in the story, it continues. Then Allah spoke Allah told him and his family to leave in the air. It's the Fajr. It says nighttime. But in the top series, the Fajr are early in the morning. Early in the morning before the, 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 the light comes up. So it was Fajr time. And even in the midst of him being the prophet, him giving revelation, you know, lots, loot. It says that even his wife, even though she was in the household with the prophet, you know, laying with the prophet, seeing the revelations of her husband, seeing his righteousness, praying, she still turned back and looked. Now in the top seer, <coughs> some might try to say that she was involved in the, in the conflammery. In, in, some, in the top seer said that she wasn't involved in any type of adultery or anything like that, but she used to help the people of the city uh, by being a lookout if there was any people that come into the to the to the to the city, any new men that came into the city, <coughs> she would inform the people. Yeah, they got another one. He coming, and she would inform them of information. <coughs> but according to the top seer, she was not involved in the, any adultery, or anything like that. But she was involved in helping her people. This is a reminder and a reflection. That's why Allah spoke said, "And look into these stories and may, and be reminded, we cannot even help." certain people that are involved in certain illicit acts. When we know the truth, we have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the hadith, those who please Allah, the displeasure of man, Allah will be pleased with you and make the people pleased with you. But those who displease Allah at the pleasure of man, meaning they please the people. Well, that's my people. You know, these are my folks. This is my mama. This is my daddy. These are my cousins. These are my brothers. These are my mothers. I'm going to help them out because I got love for them. Allah SWT says if we please the people at the displeasure of Allah, ain't nothing, nothing wrong with being nice and kind to your parents and whatnot, even if they're non-Muslim. To the contrary, it was mandatory that we show kindness to our family members, even if they're not Muslim. Allah SWT, unless they commit you or ask you to do shirk. Okay? So this sister, who was the wife of the Prophet Lot, she turned and it said that she turned back when Allah had commanded him, and don't look back. Don't even look back. Allah is to destroy them with a destruction that he never sent anybody else. And he said it came with the Sijia. The Sijia was the pebbles or the rocks. It said in the top city it had the name of everybody on each one of the birds that came and started throwing the pebbles and everybody was, you know what I'm saying, destroyed. Okay? the fire and so forth and so on. Allah flipped and turned the city upside down, the Dead Sea and all of that where there's salt in it, floating and all this other stuff. But Allah SWT said that this is a sign for us. And even after these signs, it's an amazement how the people of today, they still want to go back to the ways of Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, God loves everybody. Well, my God is a forgiving God. Yes, He is. 
but he also tells us that he's very just. Okay, he's very just, but he is merciful. He is merciful, but at the same time, he's very just. And Allah Subhanahu gives us these examples, inshallah, so that we can reflect. One, we have to be very patient, and this is also something uh, that we must be patient for Allah Subhanahu because Allah Subhanahu is in control of all things. Even though we may be surrounded by a lot of things that are wrong, we must be patient like the prophets were patient. We have to be patient like all the other prophets were patient. Noah was patient. 900 some years was given da'wah. Okay? The people of Talmud and Shu'ayb, he was patient. He used to warn them. They used to make fun of him. They used to ridicule him. Even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, after their patience, Allah Subhanahu Wa as the sister said, his retribution is very swift. Now it may not be on the time that we want. We might want it to come right now. But when it comes, it's swift. Like at the time of uh, the people of Shu'aib, Thamud, and it said that he warned them, right? Or even in the time of the, the she camel, he warned them. And when they did exactly what he told them not to do, they killed the, the she camel. Allah spoke Allah whooped them very swiftly, seven days and seven nights of nothing but destruction. Whooped them, right? So we can never think that Allah spoke Allah don't see everything. Allah sees everything. Allah is in control of everything. You know, our job is to be patient and understand that Allah spoke Allah is in control of everything. As it said, as the sister read in the footnotes, just because we may see things in uh, the person may, may not come right then and there or we, we're surrounded by certain things don't think that it's something wrong maybe with the people maybe something wrong within ourselves if we don't understand that Allah Subhanahu is in control of everything right it may be a test for us to see how we will act during these trials and tribulations the test of those who are surrounded by these trials and tribulations is patience that's the test the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was the prophet, who was the rasul, who, who had miracles and everything. They used to choke the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to make salat and they used to throw things on him. They used to, the camel intestine, they used to throw it on top of him. They used to kick him and ridicule him, boycott him and all of these things. They used to talk bad about him. They dirty macked him. They character assassinated him. They lied on him. They said he had seizures. Right? They said all of these things. They tried to call him, you know, a pedophile and all of all these things, and this is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the thing is, who are we? Who are we? We may go through certain things and whatnot. Man, we ain't nothing compared to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ain't nothing compared to the Prophet Job. He went through 19 years of fitna just because Shaitan wanted to test him. Right? And he lost everything. Not because he did something wrong but in order to test him and to elevate him in rank. So when we get surrounded by fitness, all of this is the color of Allah. All of this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa It's something that's already been written. We may not understand it, right? And maybe not for us to understand. The thing is, how do we deal with it, right? We may be surrounded by these things. How do we deal with it? If we act a fool with it, maybe we, pa we didn't pass the test. If we remain patient in it and understand that Allah spoke is in control of all things, then that is the test and that is the success. Also in these stories is the understanding of Allah's plan. As the sister said, the patience is in the consistency and doing all the things that you're supposed to do, even in the time of uh, trials and tribulations. Being consistent in Salat, right? Because you go through trials and tribulations and whatnot, you don't stop Salat, right? You're like, well, I'm mad, so I'm not going to make Salat. It means, it means being consistent in your charity. It means being consistent in your adab, meaning your uh, etiquettes, being consistent even in Ramadan's coming up, right? Ramadan about four days, okay? Regardless of whatever we're going through, we still have to be consistent. And as the Prophet Muhammad said, Allah loves consistency. 
He loves consistency. Stay, stay on target, stay consistent, stay doing the things that you're supposed to do regardless of the trials and tribulations, regardless of the tests that you go through. Stay consistent, okay? Stay patient. There was an ayat, Allah subhanahu said in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rabajeeh, Yeah, the dina amilu, spiru, wa sabiru, wa rabitu, right? Wa taqallah la ala kutuflihun. O you who believe, be patient, persevere in your patience, fortify yourself, right? Have fear of Allah so that you may be of those who achieve success. Be patient, persevere in that patience, and fortify yourself. Fortify yourself means what? Stand on guard. Study your salat, right? Your knowledge, you're gaining the choir knowledge. You're protecting yourself from shaitan, protecting yourself from shaitan's tricks, protecting yourself from going outside the bounds, right? What the Allah and fear Allah. So that you may be of those who are successful.